YouTube, welcome back. Thank you for joining. This is the mindset of Yahweh. And in this video, I just want to share with you a little bit about my journey from the United States to Freetown, Sierra Leone, as I went through the process of applying for my dual citizenship via descent. So this has been both a historical experience for me, a historical journey, as well as a spiritual journey. And if you remember from the last video, I had wanted to go to the April ceremony, but didn't get the paperwork completed. So I made preparations for the November, this past November ceremony. So as early as May, my paperwork was already completed. Everything that I needed was submitted. I had already selected the travel agency that I was going to be traveling through. By September, I think towards the end of September, I had already purchased my ticket, got the insurance, everything was good to go. Come the day of travel. Completely packed, had already selected the route towards the airport, anticipated for traffic, all that good stuff. Got on the road and the worst traffic that I had ever seen. By the time we actually got to the airport, they had just close the gate. Yeah, I missed my flight. <laughs> Can you believe that? I had never missed a flight before. I had traveled to different places. I had gone to the Caribbean. I had never gone to Europe or the continent before, but traveling pretty much is traveling, right? Make sure that you get to the airport hours ahead of time to account for the line through TSA or the traffic on the road. I thought I did all of that. I thought I was prepared, but on the day of travel, the worst traffic I had ever seen got stuck so many times by the time we actually got to the airport I couldn't I couldn't even check on spent hours on the phone with the travel agency trying to see if there was another flight that I could be booked on for the next day because I wanted to get there um, by the 23rd of November have a day free on the 24th because the ceremony started on the, the schedule for the ceremony started on the 25th and on the 25th, which is a Friday, they were supposed to have a set of workshops, which are mandatory in order to go through the dual citizenship process. You had to attend those workshops, um, organized by the government and the travel agency, all the flights that they were telling me about would have gotten me there on the 25th so in my mind i already missed this flight i'm having trouble booking myself or rebooking onto another flight to get there in time so as not to miss any of the agenda items so i was panicking at this point because i'm like this never happens i never miss a flight so after an hours and hours of trying to figure things out with the travel agency, I finally ended up having to just buy another ticket. And of course, <laughs> I decided to buy another ticket. Of course, they had a flight the next day that would have gotten me there on the 24th, which, okay, fine. I have credit from the previous um, ticket that I had missed the flight. Let me bite the bullet and get this ticket because there's no way that I'm gonna be missing this trip. This I've been planning for this for way too long. This is too much of an important trip for me to miss it now. Got the flight, headed to the airport hours before the flight. There's no way I was going to miss this second flight. So this is now the 23rd of November that I'm getting to the airport. And we're there. Everything, everything's fine. Um, I'm there with my family. All is well. I board the plane and we're heading off to France and all is well. We get to France and mind you, we're in the airport, we're in the plane and I, I definitely have to book business class next time. Those seats are way more comfortable than economy. The sleep is much more comfortable. That's the way to travel next time. So mental note. So on the plane, headed to France, get to France, and all is well. The layover was just a couple of hours, no big deal, sitting down there trying to get some work done. And then they are start boarding for the flight from France to, uh, to Sierra Leone. Get on the flight, 
no problem all is well this is smooth sailing next stop free town baby at least i thought we're in the plane flying towards sierra leone an hour into the flight i hear the pilot come on and he's the voice sounds muffled and in between his speech i'm hearing shh and then he speaks and then you hear shh like something like like air coming from somewhere and then all we hear him say overhead is we have to make an emergency landing we're turning back and we're going back to france i'm like what <laughs> what's going on at this point, this was just way too hilarious. I had already missed the last flight and then now there's an emergency on the plane that's taking us back to Paris. Am I ever going to get to Sierra Leone? <sighs> Couldn't do anything but laugh at that point because I don't know. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't know what to think. So finally headed back to the airport in Paris. Everybody got off the plane. Of course, we had to go through immigration. This is just really chaotic at this point because there's no instructions, there's no information, and you have probably like 20 booths where the custom officers are supposed to be and only two booths were occupied. So for a whole plane full of people, there are probably just two individuals checking the immigration process. So. To me, this was ridiculous because here we are. We're not going to get to Freetown at this point, at least not tonight. And you only brought two people out to check the immigration process. So anyway, finally went through immigration at this point. Again, still don't know what we're doing because there's no information being handed out. I hear from the show, somebody says that we're supposed to go to gate eight. So I met up with, um, probably like six other individuals who themselves on the same flight were a little bit confused as to what we're supposed to be doing now because nobody's giving us any information. So anyway, we're traveling together and we're going towards gate eight. So we see a customs officer come in and he's like, are you guys from going to um, Sierra Leone? So we said, yes. So he's like, is there anybody else back at customs waiting? So one of the group members is, is about to answer him. And the guy, the customs officer guy is like, can you let me speak? I'm talking, I'm at... I don't know what that was all about. Giving us attitude where you're supposed to be coming to help us. And we're giving you the information that you're asking from and you're giving us attitude. Yeah, so. Needless to say, did not have a good experience in France. We finally went to the gate after much searching around, no instructions. We get to the gate, there's another long line there. There are individuals there trying to give us coupons for the hotel and for breakfast and a shuttle back to the airport in the morning. Finally get to the hotel. Again, we're in France. Signs are both in English and in French, but the arrow direction that it's pointing, a little bit confusing. So we ended up getting to the hotel. The night was fine, hotel was fine, <laughs> but it doesn't stop. At three o'clock in the morning, fast asleep, hear this loud alarm going off. I'm, I'm confused at this point because I'm like, did I set my phone alarm? Is, it, is this a TV? Like, what's going on? Go out in the hallway only to realize this is a fire alarm going off. All the strobe lights are going at high volume. You see people he sticking their heads out through their doors. People are running down the hallway in their underwear with their bags trying to get downstairs to the lobby because where's the fire? I'm like, are you serious? I missed my flight the night before in the plane to France, had to go back because there's an emergency with the flight, get to the hotel now, and then there's fire in the hotel. Yeah. So <laughs> I go back in the room, put my clothes on, which probably I shouldn't have done, but 
I'm like, too many things are happening at this point. I'm going to make sure that I have all that I need. So grab my stuff, went down towards the elevator, trying to get downstairs. The strobe lights go off. Don't see any smoke. Don't see any fire. I just went back to my room. And to tell you the truth, there is no call on the phone in the rooms. There's nobody from the hotel that came up to say, you know, this is what's going on. Everything's okay. There's, there's nothing. There's absolutely no information. In the morning when we went down for breakfast, again, nobody said anything. It's like, it's as if it didn't happen. But anyway, all was well. There was apparently no fire. Not sure why or how the alarm got set off, but all is well. All was well. So the group of us made our way to the gate that next morning. So by now, this is the morning of the 25th. I had been in contact with the travel agency on the ground in Sierra Leone, letting them know about the flight delays and all the emergencies and everything that was taking place. So there was communication there. And apparently there was also a change in the schedule on the ground. So instead of the workshops starting on the 25th, they were going to push it back to the Monday, to the next Monday. So I wasn't, I wasn't going to be missing anything, which was amazing blessings blessings definitely because i was i was very concerned about that so we got to the airport again in the morning on the 25th went to the gate checked in got to the gate again there's about time to board they checked the passports and we're heading down um the corridor towards the plane get to the plane the doors are locked the doors are locked. I'm like, somebody, something doesn't want me to get to Sierra Leone, but it not going to happen today. I'm getting there, <laughs> you know? So we ended up standing at the entrance to the plane for probably another 40 minutes. Um, apparently they hadn't yet completed cleaning the plane. So they started boarding way too early. So we had to stand on the outside of the, the plane doors for another 40 minutes until we finally got onto the plane. You can imagine how elated I was when we actually landed in Sierra Leone that night. I'm like, oh my gosh. Words cannot describe, words cannot express. This was amazing. You land and you see the sign on the um, airport, Freetown Airport, International Airport. And you feel the hot air just as you enter, exit the, the airport, airport, sorry, the airplane, you just feel the hot air. It reminds me of when I would land in Jamaica and you just feel the hot air. It just, it's like it just lick you. And I'm like... I'm here, I'm finally here. After all of these challenges, after all of these setbacks, I'm finally here. And this is gonna be amazing. And it was amazing. It was amazing. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of, um, just some images of my travels in the airport, me sitting down. And um, just join me again for some more videos as I share. Freetown with you.